Alrighty, people. Um, just got off of work. You know, I had to wait a couple minutes till I got on the interstate because um, I almost smoked somebody the other day. I, th I thought I was paying attention, so I made sure to really pay attention while I was driving through there. But anyways, uh, I am here with the uh, UFC 308 vlog because that's what we're doing. That's what we're talking about. So, you know, without further ado, I'll hop right in. Actually, there will be one slight ado because although I think this is an exciting card, there's some good fights. Um, there's definitely a few guys on the you know the main card that I've just never really heard of. Like, so I'm a bit casual. Like, I don't know fucking everybody. So, like, there's there's some of them that it's it's gonna be a little tough talking about. But uh, like, I'll I'll still give my best you know my best take. I did some research, but yeah, at the end of the day, like, you know, it's kind of hard to compare wins with people because like. The MMA math just never fucking adds up. Everybody knows that. The first fight I'm going to talk about is actually, you know, our, our prelim finale with uh, Jeff Neal and uh, Dos Anjos. And, uh, you know, Neal's the betting favorite here. And I I think it makes sense. There's not a whole lot to say about this fight. I think they're they're both coming off losses from what I remember. I think Neal just lost to Ian Gary. And uh, Dos Anjos, I think, I don't think he's fought since he fought Fiziev. But, um... I could be wrong about that one. But, uh, yeah, they're both coming off losses. And, uh, I mean, I think it's just going to be, a, you know, straight up punching fest. Like, these guys like to strike. You know, like to get in there bang. You know, Dos Anjos, obviously a good fighter. But he's 39. You know, he's well past his prime. He's up at 170 for this fight. He, he, he's done all right at 170. But he's just old. Um, we I, we saw him wrestle a little bit, bit like, against Vaziev. Um. Like, maybe he'll bust that out. I think he'll have to. Um, nah, I think this is a setup for Jeff Neal to get a W. But uh, we'll fucking see, man. You know, I'm, I'm thinking Jeff Neal here, but I could be wrong. And I think I have the order of some of these fights, like, flipped a little. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to go with I have written down in my little notebook here. So next we got, you know, Magan Madoff, The Bullet, versus Armin Petrosian. And uh, we'll start with Petrosian. Another one of those guys, don't, don't really know him, but, like, he's 3-2 and two in the UFC, and, like, yeah, I, I think he's mainly just a striker, um, so this is kind of fight that, you know, the Bullet, I think, wants to be in. Like, I think he's he's kind of a little bit of a money fighter, it seems like, at this point. They just kind of be setting him up against people. That'd be fun. But, uh, personally, I don't fucking like that dude. Um... I just don't, I don't get his spiel, like, I don't, I don't think he's excited, he's obviously, he's fun to watch, but, like, he's just a fucked up Skyrim character, like, I, I genuinely think people would just like him, he's a fucked up Skyrim character, and supposedly, this is what my buddy tells me, that a, a couple years back, he supposedly got in trouble for, like, assaulting a, uh, like, a couple in public, because they were, like, kissing, he, like, stomped on the guy's head or some shit, supposedly, so he's just a fucking, he's a degenerate, but... You know, like, it's he's fighting guys three and two. It'll probably be a decent fight, but if I was putting money on this one, which I'm fucking not, I would I would bet the bullet. Next to my notebook, I think this is a fight I fucking flipped around, but I got Ankalaev and Rakic. Rakic. No, I'm not fucking say that. So first, I'll just talk about Ankalaev real quick. I mean, he's a wrestle fucker, you know? Typical Dagestani. He's gonna do that shit. I think his last win was Johnny Walker by knockout, but... Who doesn't fucking knock Johnny Walker out nowadays? So yeah, I don't think that plays too much of a factor into it. I think he's gonna go out there and he's gonna, you know, just do his typical shit, takedowns. Next we got Ray Kick and uh a little bit him. Currently on a two fight losing streak. He just lost to Cheery. Um I forget his loss previous to that one. But uh dude, I hate I hate that loss. Like obviously Jerry's top contender, he's just the champion recently, but he just fights so straight up and then you know, still finds a way to lose to him. But he's still obviously a good fucking guy. Good fighter. But I, I just, I hate that loss. It kind of, it kind of like, I, I was on a, the raking train for a little bit. And then I just, just watch him get pounded like that. I wasn't too happy about it. But no, what do I think he's got to do to be on Clive? Because my, I think this fight's set up against him. You know, he's going to, he's got good kicks. And he's just going to have to use that shit. Like, he's going to have to keep, you know, kicking the legs, taking those out, moving. Stay on his fucking feet, but unfortunately, this dude is kind of all over the place, you know, with just his, with his records, with his consistency. So, 
of Glock live here. This fight, I think, could be a pretty exciting one. So we're, we're talking Lero Murphy and Dan Ige. First, you know, I'll go on about Murphy. Um, he, most of his wins are against unranked guys. This is a, this is like my my biggest concern. And like, you know, like some of these unranked guys, like uh, I, he has a win over Coolbow, and uh, Coolbow's on a bit of a losing streak, but like that dude's pretty fucking good. Um, Despite, I think he's like on a two, three, five losing streak. But I, I think Kulbao is a pretty good fighter, and uh, you know, Murphy beat him. So that's like a solid unranked win, I believe. You know, I mean, Kulbao beat Milsic Bakasarian. That guy's also pretty good. I'm a little biased there. I was training with him a little bit. But, but so, like, I, I don't think his wins are horrible, but it's just hard when a dude's very, like, fought. You know, guys aren't really in the rankings, except for his win over Barbosa. But, like, Let's be fucking real. Like, Barbosa's not what he used to be. Um, I don't think that win carries as much, like, fucking weight anymore. You know, if you're not an idiot and you realize that people get older and they slow down, there's not as good anymore. Still a good fucking win, clearly. But, you know, that's his best win. And so for, uh, you know, damn 50K, all I gotta say about him is that, that motherfucker hits hard. Um, he'll, he'll mix it up in there. But uh, I just think with him... I kind of want to say with Reiki. Like, he's just kind of all over the place. He wins some, lose some. It's just pretty hard for him to be consistent. Murphy's on a winning streak. And Ige loves to make fights look close. He'll be losing. Then he'll get some big shot in there. And, uh, you know, they'll tell him after the fight, oh, wow, that was, a, that was a sick fight while they're raising the other dude's hand. So, I think it could be a good one. But I'm just going to go with Murphy here because, like, he's got the he's got the winning streak. Um, he's kind of just on that come up and, you know, Ige is just not super consistent. So I'm going Murphy here. The co-main event, you know, I think that this is a hype fight. I think a lot of people want to see this shit. We got Robert Whitaker and Hamzat the Boers Chemaev. Here's how I'm feeling about this fight. First of all, as of right now, Chemaev is the betting favorite. Um, I think that's interesting. I... I'll get more into it, but I think it's pretty crazy when you find Robert Whitaker, you know, as a dog in a fight. So, for, first I'll talk about Whitaker, I think, right? Like, dude's consistently good. You know, that's something like, he's been fighting for a while, obviously. Uh, but he consistently gets it done, former champion. And, but, like, I, I think the only problem with him is, like, when you fight for a long time, you're... You're just predictable. So the problem when you've been around for a long time is, you know, like everybody has a fucking style. And it's very hard to just adjust, you know, how you fight completely. And you know what Whitaker's going to go out there and do? He's going to throw his one-two and the head kick, right? Or one-two, one-two, one-two head kick. He's just going to keep spamming that. And so the problem is, like, you, you know what someone's going to do, and they've been doing it for a long time. It's going to make it easy to counter. And when you're fighting someone like Boars, right, he's going to fucking... He's going to time up his takedown. He's going to get on his legs. And he's going to be looking to get Whitaker to the ground. But, you know what? It's hard to forget. It can be hard for that. Whitaker has good takedown defense. You know, it's been a while since the Romero fight. But he kind of showed, like, he'll, he'll he's good at defending takedowns. And here's another thing I like about Whitaker in this fight is he's just consistent. Like, he's been doing this for a while, and he's still stuck to his game plan. And he still fucking wins. You know, despite recently losing, he's still gets it done he's rarely losing so you know i do think this is a, a just a really interesting fight for that fact you know hamza's gonna come out there fucking swinging going for his takedowns like he's gonna come out quick problem is though this is a five round fucking fight okay and we saw like what happened with usman and burns like the dude gasses hard and when he gasses he gasses dude like he starts to look bad. You can clearly tell he's feeling it in the fight. And I think that that is just going to be really bad against someone like Robert Whitaker. So getting back to the whole betting situation, right? I'm personally, I'm thinking Shamayev is going to take this. Um, I think this is a very flip-flop match, right? Like if Shamayev loses, I won't be fucking shocked at all. But I do believe Shamayev is going to get the W here as long as he doesn't completely just gas and, you know, Whitaker starts piecing him up. Uh, I think if he can keep that pressure on, get Whittier to the ground, this is going to be his fight. However, I would be lying to you if I said, like, if you want to put money on a fight, even though it's, like, such a flip match, right? Like, 
I think Whitaker as an underdog is a pretty good bet. And if you're a Whitaker fan, like, I, I wouldn't say this is a bad fight to put money on. And so lastly, the main fucking event, the whole reason I'm watching the card, we got Taporia and Max freaking Holloway. Okay, and I'm not gonna lie, like, I, I'm biased as fuck in this fight, so it might seem hard for me to have a, a fair opinion here, but I, I still think who I believe is going to win is very supportable. Okay, so what, like, what does Taporia have going for him, right? Like, is his boxing really that good, or is he just fucking hit hard? Personally, I'm more on the side that this motherfucker just hits hard, and, you know, he knows how to, knows how to get people at the right time, which, like, you know, that's an art in itself, but I'm not going to act like this dude is some fucking sick boxer. And with that being said, he's fighting Max fucking Holloway. Okay, like, the only time we can say Holloway might have been dropped is against Gaethje. But, like, this motherfucker does not get dropped. His head is a fucking coconut. Like, he's just going to, he's going to stand there and he's going to bang. Holloway's going to get hit. Like, he, that's what he fucking does. This dude likes to get hit. But he is just going to take it or he's going to, he's going to move a little, right? Like, he's not just going to get dropped by Tapori all of a sudden. This is a dude that's just going to fucking finish him. And talking about MMA math as well. I don't care that Taporia beat Volkanovski. Like, he caught Volk at the worst time possible. He just come off of a loss to Makachev. Knockout, by the way. And then takes that fight on short notice. So, like, yes, Holloway lost him three fucking times. Arguably beat him in the second fight. I think, I, I don't agree with the refing, with the, she's not refing. I don't agree with the decision there. But, you know, that's sometimes how it goes. And that was when Volk was on the come up. Max is still that guy. He's not showing any signs of slowing down, really. His chin is still fucking there. I think, like, genuinely, the only way that Taporia wins this is if he busts out that jujitsu that he supposedly fucking is really good at. Because we haven't seen that shit in a long time. And I, I genuinely think, like, he's going to have to take this fight to the ground. And on top of all of that, I'm throwing 25 smacks on this fight. Anytime you ever get Max Holloway as a betting underdog, it's a fucking steal. So I don't remember the current odds, but I'm going to post up my DraftKings bet here so y'all can see what the payout is. And I, I don't care that Taporia is undefeated. Like, he's fighting, arguably, I would say one of the greatest fighters. Max has gone out there and fought fucking everybody and damn near beat everybody too. So I, I think this is like one of the craziest fights to be happening in a while. Um, I'm super hyped for it. No fucking way I'm going against the Blessed Express, right? Yeah, I know these are my picks. I'm mostly going with the favorites here this weekend, but uh, you know, not Max Holloway. You, nobody can fucking pick against that guy.